it's a, it's a lot of people in the room. Uh, today, um, I will be talking about improving customer um, classification accuracy of customer contact transcriptions. Uh, I work at KPN, a data science lab, and part of text analytics group. We are doing a lot of interesting research in text analytics, and I will uh, give you some insights on what we have done so far and uh, where we can proceed with that. So, yeah. Uh, I will try. I will do my best. Um, so at KPN, we have a lot of customer contacts. We uh, receive 7 million service calls per year and around 700,000 chats. It's only for KPN a consumer brand. And also we have Telford and all other brands with a lot of customer contacts there as well. Uh, calls and chats are expensive. So uh, reducing uh, customer contacts is an important target for our business stakeholders. Right now, we have uh, some uh, type of categorization in place, and all chats and calls are being categorized manually. So we have classification three, three with three levels. On the first level, we have about 10 categories, 70 categories on the second level, and, approximate, and more than 400,000 categories on the third level. That's huge, a lot of different um, categories in there. And uh, manual uh, call and chat classification is being used to spot uh, issues that affect a large number of customers. And therefore, it's important to monitor what's happening out there and whether some kind of calls, um, there is anomaly in it. Um, manual classification right now has a lot of problems. So many uh, calls and chats are not being categorized at all. And agents are not particularly motivated to, to do their job correctly. So therefore, we were asked to help out and at least categorize uh, the calls and chats, which we couldn't, uh, couldn't be categorized by people. Um, so if we look at the categories, uh, there are three levels, and that's the first level. Um, yeah, it's, I will not go through all of them, but uh, if we just briefly read what's in there, we already spot some problems. So there are two groups like payment, prepaid and tariffs and billing and tariff use. They seem to be overlapping. Yeah, so it's okay, but we know that issue. Also, there is report disruption, report disruption TV. These are uh, topics defined by the business. There is clearly overlap between them because yeah, you can have a problem with internet and television at the same time. Where would you put such a call in which category? It's not clear. So let's uh, zoom in into some of these first categories and look at the second level. So there is order, delivery, payment, billing, and inside of this we have some other levels. And uh, we also spot the same problem. Mechanic and mechanic appointment is in two different uh, first level categories, and it's not clear in which we should put a call or chat. The same is with damage, loss, and reparation. These are two different places where uh, such a call can, can be put in. So humans can easily misinterpret or being con be confused in uh, where to put the call or chat. So this is an issue we know, um, the same with installation hardware. But nevertheless, we had already some data, label data. We had 180,000 labeled call transcripts and 40,000 labeled chat transcripts. And we did decided to start from there. So why not to try? We try different kind of uh, supervised algorithms to try to predict these categories. So it's a naive base, uh, uh, some baseline algorithm we tried. CNN, uh, it's a similar to Kim Yon's convolutional neural network for sentence classification. We modified that model um, a bit. I will show you a bit later how it looked like. LSTM and hybrid model, CNN with LSTM layer on top of it. And uh, we compared the performance of, base, um, of the model to two things. Agent's accuracy, what's the human accuracy? for uh, this task and accuracy of CNN on Amazon reviews. So Amazon reviews is a pilot project we did before. Uh, we gathered Amazon reviews from internet uh, that belong to different categories, like baby, food, um, cosmetics, many, <laughs> many categories out there. And there are also uh, subcategories. So we were trying to predict uh, product category and subcategory based on the review of a person. And um, we wanted to compare the performance to that one. So if we look at the example of the data we have, this is a chat. This is a nice example of a chat. Actually, everything is in Dutch, but I translated this particular example into English. You can try to read that. Uh, the idea of this chat is that someone uh, wanted to cancel a subscription. Then they had a contact with retention desk. And in the end, they ended up buying extra products. That's exactly what we want to have. Uh, this happens. Um, and. Uh, 
basically this call, this chat, was classified in cancellation, cancel, subscription, because each call and chat is only classified in one to, into one category. Clearly, this is not about one category. There are multiple categories out there. And this is, um, these are words that belong to cancellation, but these words belong to order and subscription renewal. This is only a part of chat. This chat was longer than an hour. And in the end, uh, we clearly could see there was a new order placed for a mobile subscription. So there are basically three things happening with only one tag. So it's not only that class classes are misleading, there is another problem that one conversation goes about multiple things when there is only one label available. So if we look at CNN architecture, um, you can uh, take a look at, uh, at the block and the paper of uh, mentioned here. Um, we took the basic idea from here and modified it a bit. So basically the text we have, welcome, you are having chat with Yap. Uh, we can um, we can take this uh, string and create a word embedding matrix, which is which has size size of the chat by number of embeddings, and then apply apply convolutions on top of that, three in parallel. So we have three words we are looking uh, in the sequence four and five, and then we use max pool and join um, join these um, results and have a hidden layer and apply softmax. We have two categories we're trying to predict simultaneously, the first level and the second level. And we have some penalty on if there is um, a second category predicted which doesn't belong to the first category. And there is also an extra information we have per chat uh, and per word, like if this word was pronounced by agent or client. Uh, we also have information about products um, that a customer has at KPN and some other information, what kind of contacts he had before. So this information can be added, uh, information per word can be added in word embeddings layer and information per, uh, per document can be added in the join layer as an extra information. It actually improves um, performance a bit. So if we'll compare uh, the results of the performance of the model um, to the baseline we defined, so on Amazon product reviews, it's, and the performance was quite nice. It's 88% uh, uh, and 65% um, on the second level. For the chat data, we got 65 and 50%. Uh, and the call data is a bit disappointing. It's only 51 and 40%. So the reason is uh, that performance um, is differs so much. There are multiple reasons. First of all, custom interaction data is more complex than the re review data. In the review, you have one person uh, that tells something about the review. In a conversation, you have two people. So the style of conversation differs. Also, custom is likely to talk about different problems in the same chat or call. But uh, in the review, there is yeah, there is likely only one product that's described. People don't often compare things to each other in the review. Um, and the custom interaction is longer. So in our model, we um, assume that the length of chat is one half thousand. If uh, the length was shorter than one half thousand, we added no word placeholders to the, um, to the chat to make it one half thousand, or we uh, removed some words if it was longer. Um, and for call transcripts, we see worse performance. And the reason of that, that we, these are transcripts. So there is uh, inevitable loss of information when we actually transcribe the data and it uh, affects the performance drastically. For the rest, uh, agents are the same, everything is the same. And also labeling quality is significantly worse than Amazon data. Amazon data is really clear, separable. It's comparable to Rotor's data set. It's very easy to separate the classes with each other. Well, yeah, in the conversation, it's not that clear. This class is not mutually exclusive, as we saw in the beginning. But also, indeed, uh, each chat and call is about multiple things. And uh, in the review, you don't have it. And nevertheless, the performance of chat on chat data was very close to human accuracy. So human accuracy, I will not go into details how we actually measure that. Um, this is a whole other discussion, but uh, our estimation is that human accuracy on the first level is from 61 to 71 percent, on the second level from 52 to 69 percent. It's a pessimistic versus optimistic uh, performance. So it's actually quite bad. So 
there, there are clearly steps needed to improve human accuracy. However, it wasn't really feasible. So um, business is very reluctant to change the categories we had. So we decided to proceed with automatic chat classification in TensorFlow with the performance we described. And um, we understand that creating new labels is costly. So we decided to inv investigate cheaper labeling tagging alternatives using unsupervised learning techniques. And we tried different things. We tried LDA, TF, IDF with k-means, DoctorVec with k-means, average ortovec with k-means. We can, we could think about many other things, but that's what we tried. And uh, when evaluating techniques, we mainly paid, paid attention to interpretability, how easy it is to uh, describe the clusters or groups we, we uh, found. Uh, what's, how stable is that algorithm and uh, how well does it fit to buckets? Buckets uh, is another notion. Basically, these are parts of classification tree um, mapped into some smaller categories. Um, and that's what we wanted to map our clusters to. Um, so LDA, we used GenSim LDA implementation on 180,000 uh, cold transcripts. And after finding the most typical words per topic, we actually tried uh, LDA on a different number of topics to include. And this seemed to be the best, um, which is still not that good. Um, and we, we were trying to map these topics uh, we show to buckets. And buckets are assurance, fulfillment order, fulfillment installation, internet, sales, safe, uh, but cancellations, TV and device and proposition. So if we look at the words, we see this is something about TV, uh, internet and uh, telephony. And if you look at this, this is something about payments, so it's a bucket assurance. We can do the same with all other topics. This is the buckets we get. And uh, we can evaluate that based on the heat map, at least. We can start from there. And on the left side, there are LDA topics uh, defined by LDA algorithm. And um, there are buckets uh, on horizontal axis. And we see they don't map really nicely. So the only bucket that maps nicely is assurance. But there are a bunch of buckets missing, like hardware. We have no hardware uh, bucket assigned. Uh, we couldn't find any, which looks like hardware. And TV, um, yeah, um, sales, uh, it's also another bucket we couldn't find. Um, another problem with the LDA is that it's not stable. So. If we feed the very same documents in a different order to LDA multiple times, every time we get different mapping of topics to, to words, and it sh which results in different topic definition. And so on the left side is the first attempt, on the right side is another attempt. And we see that we can still find some topics on the left side, uh, from the left side on the right side. But there are also some that are not there anymore. And there are new topics which emerged. Um, and um, there is an argument that it's probably uh, will be better if you have more documents. But however, um, this issue seems to be hard to fix. There is a paper, what's wrong with topic modeling and how to fix it. So how to fix it part is pretty hard. <laughs> so you can take a look into that. So the other thing that we tried is doc to vec with k-means. Uh, we also tried the other types of clustering. I will not go into that. I will just explain this one. So it's again sim implementation of uh, doc2vec to generate document vectors. Um, we used k-means uh, with k++ in initialization with 10 clusters. We tried also different number of clusters. This, this seemed to be the best. Attempts to group, um, we attempt to group the documents by similarity of document vector generated by doc2vec. And we tried to understand the clusters uh, by doing two things, the heat map and also TF-IDF to predict the clusters. I use decision tree for that and measure feature importance. So the, if you look at the heat map, indeed, again, it doesn't look that nice. Uh, we cannot see possibly which clusters are related to which buckets. There is only one which is really clear is assurance. Um, maybe we can also say that uh, cluster nine is something about uh, devices. Uh, it's still very hard to argue what it is. So naturally created clusters are very different from buckets. And if we look at typical words that emerge, uh, actually maybe clusters zero and nine make sense, but seven also doesn't make sense, which looked like though 
quite well if you look at the heat map. Um, and there is another problem that emerges. So if you use Doc2Vec for um, inferring new documents, so if you, there is a new document coming, you want to classify that in some particular cluster, uh, then it, you will not get consistent result. Doctor Vec, uh, in vector inferring will give you every time a different result. You can solve that by averaging like 20 attempts of inferring the vector. You may get something more or less stable, but it's costly and doesn't guarantee you good results. Um, can be solved by creating document vectors by uh, computed weighted average or just average of word vectors belonging to the document. Uh, which also didn't give us any good results. So it's quite disappointing. Uh, we can conclude that unsupervised learning techniques, even though we haven't tried all of them, uh, fail to come up with categories meaningful and useful to do the business. And stability and interpretability is also an issue. So we have possible improvements, uh, guided LDA that we actually uh, feed in, uh, initialize uh, um, the metrics for LDA in a particular way so that it comes up with categories we want to see. And also semi-supervised clustering with seeding. Uh, for instance, if we, um, if we define cluster, if we try to get clusters from uh, document vectors defined as average of all word vectors, we could initialize center of cl uh, clusters as words belonging to some ontology notion. So, uh, for instance, if we're talking about internet, there are words like Xperia box, uh, modem, Wi-Fi that belongs to um, notion internet. And then we compute average of these words and initialize class, uh, center of cluster internet with that uh, number, um, with that vector. Um, and so we decided actually to look into ontology um, Together with the business stakeholders, uh, we defined some ontology dimensions and ontology terms, and we used uh, word embeddings from word to vec or also GLAF, it's uh, another thing we tried, to create ontology term synonyms and ontology and document vectors. And um, we wanted to validate tagging techniques um, using manually tagged uh, validation set. So how well is it mapped to, the, uh, to what humans decided? Uh, as a tag for that particular document. So these are um, main uh, pillars of the ontology we built. So the customer journey, service and result. There are different steps of customer journey, different kind of services the customer can call about, different results of the calls. Um, and together with the business, by looking also at TF-IDF of the, um, um, of the uh, terms belonging to particular notions, we could come up with these words. Um, we also could come up with synonyms of these words based on word to vec. So um, basically, we're computing cosine distance to the to the words. So Clachten Formulier has uh, similar words as Formulier, Formuliertje, Klacht. Uh, so these are things that can be considered as synonyms uh, in, at some point of this of these words. So uh, there are different uh, tagging approaches we could use here. So first of all, it's a um, vector similarity approach. Uh, we generate uh, word vectors using Gensim, WordVec, or GLAF. We create document uh, and ontology vectors by computed, uh, computing weighted average or just average or vectors uh, of words belonging to the document or ontology. And um, we compute after that similarity between uh, these vectors, document ontology vectors, and if similarity exceeds the threshold, we assign the tag to the topic, uh, to, to the document. And there is another approach, topic uh, word count approach. So we uh, generate similar words for ontology terms. We count a number of ontology terms and similar words in the document, normalize the count and assign topic to the document if normalized count exceeds the threshold. So I will show you in the details how, how it looks like. This is a vector similarity approach. So this is the chat you have seen. Um, and we can come up with a document vector in, this, in the following way. We take all the words, we take all the vector embeddings of all the words, with the compute average of that, and, or weighted average, with TF idea of averaging. This is a typical thing to do. And we come up with a document vector that way. And the same we can do for ontology. This is an ontology term. 
these are all words that belong to ontology and we can and this is translated into english so we can compute a vector embedding and compute ontology vectors that way by averaging vectors of words and then when we have them both we compare them using content similarity if content similarity exceeds the threshold then tech complaint will be unsigned in this case uh, yeah there are other similarity measure probably for movers distance is something to look into but we didn't go there so because similarity is something we used here um, the other approach is a topic word count approach so this is again the same chat um, there are words that uh, say this is about constellation so cancel retention and cancel again so word count would be two words that are in ontology plus zero eight uh, times one the word ret retention which is a synonym of cancellation in, in this uh, data set and we divide it by number of words in a um, in a document one half thousand as we defined and then the score would be that number times topic weight so because we know some topics have more words than other topics you want to correct for that so this is the way we correct this can be probably done in better ways but that's what we tried so far uh, and if score exceeds the threshold, then it, the cancellation tag will be assigned. Uh, the same with internet subscription. So we have internet words here and uh, some other words here. And in this way, we can define whether tag internet will be assigned to this, uh, to this chat. Uh, the important thing to mention here is that uh, when we looked at the calls and chats and tried to use supervised approach, we assumed that uh, there, there is only one label that can be assigned to call a chat. Here, we assume there can be multiple tags uh, assigned to, uh, to a chat or call. So uh, these are the results uh, for vector similarity. So where we computed um, the similarity between uh, ontology terms and, um, and the documents. And we looked at the uh, precision and recall and accuracy per tag. And uh, in the end, uh, we measured the total F1 score. Uh, there are some ill-defined categories. It was never assigned. Uh, this is a bad sign. <laughs> so it looks like we need to look uh, at these particular categories and improve them somehow. Uh, it makes sense. Uh, for instance, custom information is something that people talk about all the time. Uh, it doesn't matter about what kind of topic you're interested in when you're calling KPN. We always ask you, what is your postcode house number? And th therefore, these terms belong to customer information. Um, the same is information or complain. It's, it's sometimes hard to define. Uh, the other approach gave us a bit better results. So this is a topic word count results. We have a um, better uh, average of one score. And there are no ill-defined categories. However, uh, the results are also not uh, always the best. Um, yeah, so we we can say that um, ontology uh, doesn't give us the results we were uh, exactly hoping for. Um, it uh, it gives us F1 score lower than we, we we thought to have. So the problem here is that our ontology categories that we defined with the business are still quite vague. And um, it's very hard to come up with a good, uh, good categories, which are mutually exclusive. This is the, the key point here. So um, if you sit with the stakeholders, if you have the same problem, if you want to sit with the stakeholders, you really need to be strict to them and make sure that the human accuracy, that he, uh, it's very high, that pe when people define categories, they um, have a very high chance to agree with each other on that point. So there are possible improvements that can be done to ontology that we're going to look into uh, using part of speech parsers. There, for Dutch, there are frog and spacey to define uh, the phrases. Manteur, bestel, afspraak maken. These are typical uh, Dutch phrases that we could be interested in. And use phrase embeddings. Uh, for instance, fast text of Facebook is something that we could, could use to, uh, to do that and uh, indeed improve ontology categories and ontology terms. Uh, nevertheless, that we did not achieve uh, the results we were hoping for, we actually still can believe it can work. Um, 
The main advantage of applying ontologies is that it requires 10 times less labeled data than uh, a supervised learning algorithm. So we believe that a validation set of 5,000 can be good enough to evaluate how good is your labeling using ontologies. And for CNN that I showed in the beginning, you need at least 50,000 uh, calls a chat to get uh, good results. So it's a big uh, cost difference as well and time difference. Um, I told it's important to define the categories well when the human accuracy is high. And um, the procedure I would advise you if you have a comparable problem and you have no uh, labels whatsoever of the data, you can uh, first defi define that with the business, be very strict that they're mutually exclusive, then start labeling the data when you agreed on the hum that the human accuracy was good enough. If you gather at 5,000, then go on with ontology and see whether you get successful, good results. Uh, if it's not successful, you can always proceed and label more data and proceed with CNN, which we which actually shows good results. And um, that's basically the approach we're gonna take now. The project I was telling you is a project for consumer market, uh, for business market right now, we have no categories whatsoever. So we are planning a lot of workshops with the business stakeholders uh, to define the categories uh, for each level. We reiterate, um, com compute human accuracy and proceed only if we are um, satisfied with that. And if we gather 5,000, we will proceed with ontology for that notion and then if it's not working nicely, we will go further. Thank you. Um, uh, yeah, if you have any questions, please ask, ask me. And we are hiring. So if you're interested in text mining and uh, what I was telling here, please, uh, yeah, or anything else, please come up uh, to our booth. Uh, we have the booth here. So thank you. Very nice talk, Maria. Thank you very much. So we have some minutes left for questions. Does anybody have a question for her? Thank you. Uh, thank you for the talk. Uh, I would like to ask you, um, so one of the problems that maybe you're facing, and as a result, uh, models cannot differentiate between mm -hmm. categories, is that the signal of the nature of the problem, which is the category, uh, is also mixed with a lot of other information yeah. about the mood of the caller or the way he expresses himself, which is very non-standard. Yeah. But I would expect that your agents are trained to reply in a way that is more or less standard. So have you tried isolating only the answers of the agent and then yeah. training only on that? Actually, we tried both isolating only uh, customer information, only agent. It's not getting much better. Okay. Unfortunately. <laughs> Any other questions? <laughs> Actually, there was a talk in the morning uh, uh, about text mining where he uses uh, a summon filter mm -hmm. to get just the uh, most important sentence yeah. from a Dutch text. Did you, I don't know if, if you're maybe going to try this or... Yeah, we tried actually a uh, su summarization, but it was for different purposes. Uh, when agent um, has interaction with the customer, he wants to know whether he, um, the customer already had interaction before. And it's very hard to go through the whole chat, so we could use summary to, um, yeah, to give that information um, faster. And we basically we were testing the quality of summary based on uh, classification results, on summary versus the whole text. Uh, but I don't see that summary can improve uh, this performance anyhow. Thanks. Any other questions? We have like two minutes left at the back. Uh, just a very simple question. Uh, when you show the results for LGA and uh, the first part of your mm -hmm. analysis, what kind of text preprocessing did you do? Uh, we, we tried different things, uh, mostly anonymization. Uh, so we uh, tried to remove as much of names and numbers, not remove but replace by a placeholder. 
uh, and remove some stop words or not remove them and compare the results. It did not improve very uh, much. Yeah. Yeah, there are some. So there are some stop words yeah. uh, in your categories, uh, sure. which is I don't know if you try to expand. I will try to to do without and with, and it's help. not okay. helping. Thanks. <laughs> Last question, maybe. Hi. So you are using CNN. So have you tried LSTM or yeah, some kind of? We tried. So I what is the best? Um, CNN is the best and the fastest. Okay. Thank you. All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Maria. Please give her another warm applause.